Yo, welcome back to a brand new episode of The Shuffle Pod. We are now on episode number 19. We're almost in 20 episodes in. That's crazy. And today's episode, we got another recurring guest. I think for, what, the third time now? That's crazy. Yeah, we popular. got... Popular yeah, guy. You are popular. <laughs> <laughs> the popular Can't guest. keep him away. <laughs> nope. We got PJ back at it again on the pod for a third time certainly won't be the last but definitely <laughs> exciting to have him on because in this episode we do want to talk about toronto regionals which obviously was just this past weekend and me and pj were both there so we thought it was a great idea to try to get pj on someone who was at toronto and kind of do like a recap of toronto recap of the tournament all that good stuff so we thought it'd be great to have pj on we do want to talk about some other things so of course arlington is coming up uh, by the time you're watching this actually is this coming up the thursday before arlington right Right before Arlington. Yeah. Right before. So, perfect. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we get to talk about Arlington in this episode. And uh, this time we're actually before the tournament, not after the tournament. And then, of course, we've got a lot of really insane new reveals today with Scarlet and Violet. Even as uh, we're recording this, just this morning, even more new cards got revealed from Scarlet and Violet. So definitely a lot to talk about within this episode. So stay buckled in for that. But before we do get into all that, we've got to do our weekly recap. So we'll start things off here with Lindsay. How has your week been? I actually think this is going to be like a like a double week recap because when we had recorded previously, it, it had been like almost two weeks since our last recording mm, and how it all point. lined up. Yeah. So it is. It's like, it might actually be like a double week. Um, however, both my weeks were exactly the same. Um, nothing too crazy for me. I've just been I've just been working every day. You guys know how it is. Um, but I don't know if I ever talked. So I know I told you guys about the pumpkin decorating competition at work, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if I ever like reiterated that we did win, right? So oh, the infusion center, cool. nice. so my department, my Good department grass. did win. Um, so like, yeah, it's, it's with, it's against all the different departments. So like I'm the infusion center, they have like mm -hmm. the doctor's office upstairs. They have the, the research, the lab, uh, the pharmacy. So like we all did that. We ended up winning. And it went so well that they decided to do a gingerbread decorating competition. So that is due tomorrow as we are recording it. It's due on, on the Monday that um, like four days ago or three days ago, whenever this episode came out. But we finished it. We did a Santa's beach house, Ooh. gingerbread house. So everything cool. has to be edible. 100% of it has to be edible, which was kind of the challenge. But let me tell you guys, it turned out so ridiculously cute i can't even it's so funny i'm gonna have to share pictures uh, on my twitter because i hate that it's about hilarious. gingerbread houses though like because they look so cool right it's just like a sandcastle you never want to knock it down like and and right. christmas cookies for me is like that's my weakness um so to mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. a house built out of gingerbread and i'm sure i mean if it's anything like your pumpkin was i'm sure it looks fantastic but you know oh, it's you, so you, great <laughs> you you spend all that time and you make you know that gingerbread house and then you gotta tear it all down or you know it gets yeah. stale and it tastes like trash so yeah i think we had like a week at work um to work on it like we would all just like in between our patients like one day i had like three cancellations so like i would sp i spent like a good two hours over there just like decorating um but i've been doing a little bit of shopping so i got this super cute deck box it's from this Ooh. Japanese website that has things from like the Japanese Pokemon Center. So look at that. Look how ridiculously cute oh, this is, cool. you guys. Wow. All the starters on it. Yeah, it's got all the little starters. It's so freaking cute. So catch me rolling up in Orlando with this. <laughs> um, I got this really awesome hoodie that I'm wearing. It's it's more, you can see like mm. on the back. Ooh. Oh, cool. Solid Gyarados. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's like, a, it's really cool, like Gyarados hoodie that I got. Um. And I guess like the newest Funko Pops that I got, right? So like I'm a huge Avatar, um, Avatar The Last Airbender. So I did, I did get two Avatar Funkos out of my collection. We got May and Azula. Ooh. So some, some good characters from Avatar. And that's like um, the, the, the cartoon, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 Not the movie, the cartoon, not the yeah. new movie that came out. Yeah, no, yeah. not the whole live action or like yeah. the movie movie part mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, but like Azula, Azula was like the the Zuko sister, like the Fire Lord, the, the future Fire Lord's sister, and she was she was evil, but you know Zuko had a good character development. So yeah, 
good stuff good stuff um i have been playing so much pokemon violet you guys i mm-hmm. i think i was like kind of trashing on it the last episode we recorded mm-hmm. not trashing on it but being like mm, it's okay yeah i've been getting mm-hmm. way too much into it now it's yeah. like i'm kind of sucked in the story <laughs> is actually incredible the visuals obviously need some work that's like the biggest downfall about it is that it, it, visually it's not the greatest like they could right. have done so much better and hopefully they will update it more but the story is so freaking good yeah i heard it was like and one I've of the best been games streaming right? that. that's what i've heard it is yeah. it's so it's actually incredible like the how you have the three different storylines you can follow and mm-hmm. um i am currently gonna i think what i want to do is have an entire evolution party is what i'm going to do first so i do have jolteon mm-hmm. and flareon currently nice so i need to i need to get the rest of those but it's actually really really good i've been streaming it lately um and i haven't been streaming pokemon tcg at like at, at all really mm-hmm. yeah, um, i don't blame you one like I, I needed like a little bit of a break because i was like, doing a lot of things like with work and then like i had a lot of like personal things to take care of and then i was like you know what i'm like stressed out when i'm streaming ptcgo and like it's making me worse at the game <laughs> so i'm taking a step back yeah. from that and i'm just gonna stream pokemon violet for a little bit like maybe once a week or so fair yeah no i don't blame you i've been i haven't been filling the streams either like i it i I usually have like those streamer blocks but just the format right now is just so stale and mm-hmm. we're gonna talk a little bit more about the the format and stuff because there's actually we got a we got an official release date for when Scarlet and Violet's coming out, which I yeah. kind of want to talk about because I I'm not a fan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I feel you on that one with like the the PDCGO stream burnout. Like I have no problem making videos, but the streaming side of things is just like I haven't been feeling All it right. that much either. You know, I'm mean, kind of on and off with it. But I think that is kind of it with me. Um, what about you, LDF? So I've had a pretty uh, long, I guess two weeks since obviously i did go to the toronto regionals which we're going to talk more about when we get to the toronto segment of the podcast i just kind of chilled for a bit uh, i ended up going to my locals uh this past friday uh not as many people came obviously i guess some people were kind of burnt out from like toronto uh, but i ended up playing this really cool lost box deck i wanted to try a lost box i played a lost box deck with uh galarian a moltres in it one of my favorite pokemon cards in the past while so i was experimenting with that went three and two uh, lost to a Galarian Weezing deck, so like, yeah, quad Weezing, obviously I'm not going to beat that, and then I lost in a pretty close game against, uh, Lugia, but I do like the deck a lot, so I'm definitely going to experiment with that a little bit more, kind of diving into Lost Box, something that I haven't tried before IRL yet, and, um, did a lot of Christmas shopping, went to a family Christmas party, uh, yesterday, saw a lot of the family members and all that good stuff, always a good time to do that and catch up on family and all that good stuff. And then, uh, yeah, so Funko shopping. So obviously I've been doing a lot of Funko shopping. I, I need to chill out on that, but I have been doing a lot. And I've got four Funkos here that I bought since the last episode. So the first one I bought is actually Steve Jeez. with sunglasses. Steve from Stranger Things. Uh, cool. so this one's pretty cool. Actually, fun fact, I bought this the night I met up with you and John, PJ. Oh, I had to leave it in my friend's sweet. car. So I did, yeah, I had to leave it in my uh, friend's car because I didn't want to bring it with me. Um, but we got that. like... I'll walk around the tournament with the yeah. Steve Funko, but yeah, this I one's really Steve. cool. Make it a chain. <laughs> yeah. Not the only Steve Funko that I am looking to get. I might be getting another one on Tuesday. Oh, and then I got Steve another one. Stranger Things one. We got Eddie here. Yeah. This one was Eddie. hard to find. Yes, sir. Eddie, <laughs> the goat from season four. Um, so bought Eddie. Uh, this one was hard to find. I got it actually for a pretty good deal. There were three places that had them. One was for like a lot and the other one was for even more. And then the other place I went to had it even cheaper. So I got a good deal on Eddie here. Definitely a good one to have. A huge fan of Stranger Things and Stranger Things season four is really good. Eddie obviously was kind of the standout character. He just like flat out revived uh, Metallica, which is sick. Yeah. Some other ones I got. Um, got a really cool Funko here. We got Scarlet Witch from Civil War. Uh, this one's kind of a grail. I actually found it for an insanely good price at a Funko store. This one's like a really good one to have because all the Scarlet Witch Funkos that are old went up in price because mm-hmm. of the WandaVision show and all the yeah. Scarlet Witch ones they made. So all the older ones go up in price. So this one's a really cool one to have. And I got it for a like, really good deal for what it's actually worth. So I had to cop that, even if I'm not like the biggest Scarlet Witch fan. And then finally, I uh, just wanted to point this one out. A new, new one I got. We got Phantom Shadow from Scooby-Doo. I love Scooby Doo. I love the dark. That's why it's so Bro. nice. It's so nice. I got That's this for so once cool. again a really good deal 
Um, I'm a huge Scooby-Doo fan. I love the original uh, 60s, 70s Scooby-Doo Where Are You mm -hmm. show. And this is obviously one of the iconic villains from that show. I need to get the other ones. There's like spooky space kook and stuff. And there's the nice. ghost clown and all that good stuff. But I'm a huge Scooby-Doo fan. I had to cop that. Um, and that's obviously one of the more iconic and memorable villains from the show. And that's kind of the Funkos I've bought. And I got a few more that I'm going to be buying, but I need to chill on that <laughs> for Christmas shopping stuff. Because I'm spending way too much money on that. But uh, those are my Funkos I got. And uh, my collection is growing even more. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I've been up to this week and all that good stuff. So what about you, PJ? How has your week been? Um, my week has definitely been crazy. Um, getting ready for basically two tournaments almost back to back it, what it feels like back to back in the same format you know coming off of LAIC and the the team doing really well out there and then trying to learn pretty much a brand new format or counters to a, to a format um getting mm -hmm. everything packed unpacked repacked to go back out is just a little crazy so i can definitely see like burnout aspect coming into somebody who is a professional ptcg player um, just trying to get everything ready and the mental stress that you kind of go through. Uh, been testing quite a bit, obviously trying to do really well. Uh, LDF knows that uh, we tested pretty much all day when we were there for Toronto. And yep. then uh, I decided to go with a deck off of a whim <laughs> and build it in the hotel room the night before and then just oh rock with it. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very fun. But yeah. <laughs> I, I am uh, doing a lot of Christmas things at home. So definitely stressed out uh, home-wise just to get everything, the big scramble, um, as you both know and everybody listening. I'm, I'm a busy guy, and I have usually a thousand things going on, but between you know working and, and the team and whatnot, it's just like it's crunch time uh, at this time of the year. So I'm, I'm thankful to look towards the future in a lot of things, uh, not only in my personal life but Pokemon life. Um, into January when everything calms down. So uh, that's that's been kind of my week in a nutshell, just uh, preparing and and uh, and shopping as well. So uh, I know that you guys showed some of your really cool collection items. I don't have anything that I've recently purchased, uh, but I did get a couple of items to add to my collection here for I have my Dragonite binder. So these are all the Dragonites, and you can see um, all the way back from Wizards of the Coast area. It's, uh... So are the spaces like ones that you haven't? The spaces yet? are the ones that I don't have yet. But then, hopefully, uh, hopefully Luna can get cut out of here. But <laughs> um, <laughs> so you can see, like, there's obviously all of the I different oh rare. There's so many. There I know. Are there's so a lot of many. Dragon Knights. And then, uh, I mean, there's more to come. There's some other promos that I don't have, too. And I even put, like, Erica's Dragonair in there because that was one of the coolest-looking cards from the old Wizards of the Coast set. So I've got that collection going. Um, trying to get all the English ones, and then I'll fill the pages with some of the alternative uh, language ones. Like, uh, I know there's a lot of German, mm -hmm. obviously Japanese. Um ton of cards that i want to get for that collection but i did see at target there was a huge dragonite plushie i wanted to get that so bad but i i resisted the urge because <laughs> i wasn't shopping for me i was shopping for other people so i can't go out and buy you, you know you are stronger <laughs> than me uh, <laughs> for sure and me yeah I, you I, put on your Christmas list, PJ. Yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see, just see if Santa, <laughs> Santa will bring it to me. So. Yeah, you'll just see just, like, this big, like, thing wrapped under your tree, and you yep. open it up, and you just see a massive, like, Dragonite plushie. <laughs> Luna will end up laying on it. I do, um, mm -hmm. do want to point out the fact that Magnum is asleep on my Aww, hand look right at now. that puppy. If he's, he's a little sleepy boy. He's, yeah. he's sleeping on my hand. Oh. If you guys are not... Uh, watching on on YouTube, what are you doing with your life? But if you're you're listening on any yeah. of the streaming softwares, make sure you're tuning in to this specific point uh, on our YouTube channel here for the Shuffle Pod, and you can see a sleepy puppy. Cause he's sleeping, he's just snoozing he's on my hand. Snoozing, yeah. <laughs> and he's got his little paw out that's <laughs> also like resting. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's the cutest thing I've ever Aww. seen. So as you guys know, you can always ask the pod. So feel free to send us questions um, for the chance of them being answered on next week's podcast. You can send us uh, any guests that you would like to see as well as, you know, any topic ideas you'd like us to talk about. You send that over to podcast at the shuffle squad .com. You know where to find it. 
And if you want to get anything that's customized to your liking and want to rep the Shuffle Squad, you can actually go over to yourplaymat.com and get a custom TSS playmat or sleeves. So you can check all that product out. The link will be down in the description of the YouTube video, but you can also see that in the description of any streaming service. Check out yourplaymat.com and use code TSS5YP to save yourself 5% off on anything you order from there. And anything that you do order that is TSS related, we will get a kickback here. So you're helping support us and our content creators as well. So we definitely appreciate you checking them out if you can. It is Christmas time, but it's still important to treat yourself every now and again. Uh, if, you, if you're if you looking to treat yourself on some Pokemon cards, whether that be singles or bulk, you can go to atlascollectibles.com, use code TSS12, save yourself 12%. I think that's one of like the most percentages of a code that's like around right now. I feel like they're all like not 12, you know what I mean? 12 no, is a good number. The largest good number. percentile. The largest percentage. <laughs> uh, so make sure you can do that. But and if you're more of a PTCGO person, you can go to ptcgostore.com, use code TSS5, save yourself 5% on your order. Uh, I think it's time to guess that Pokemon. Do, 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 do. We're going to do things a little differently. We're actually, PJ is going yes. to, he's going to let us guess the Pokemon. So it's me and Lindsay versus, or trying to guess whatever PJ shows for his Pokemon. So, all right, PJ, you ready? Yes. So I have a Pokemon card here I will not reveal to you, but we will give out the first clue that it is a seven-letter Pokemon from Gen 2. Seven Gen letters two. from Gen 2. Gen okay. 2. So we're in the, um, this is the Torchic, right? No. Chikorita no? Syndical Totodile. Chikorita. Oh my gosh, I always forget mm -hmm. that. Um, silver and gold is is two. Um, okay. okay. What do we got here? So seven letters. Okay. What do we got seven here? For from seven, seven, two. Mm -hmm. seven from Gen that Two. Seven from Gen Two. I mean, geez. seven. Dang, that's a tough one. Because a lot of the Pokemon I'm thinking of are either long or short. There's no in between, like seven. So I gotta yeah. really think here. Let's see. That's eight. No. What do we got here? Seven letters. Is Victini Gen 2? No, it's Gen 5. Yeah. Gen 5? Mm -hmm. oh <laughs> <laughs> Samsonite. That was way she's out. A, she's a way out of the ballpark. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't even think of a seven letter Pokemon in Gen 2. Mm. All right. I got one. I got one. Okay. Okay. Want me to go? Yeah. Go for it. Is it Steelix? It is not Steelix. <sighs> Good guess, good guess. Uh, would mm -hmm. you like me to reveal a clue? Clue, please. All right. It is an electric type Pokemon. Electric? Oh, this isn't... Is what it, it, uh... Oh. Um, what's the little... Are those little, like... Re, aren't the little red and blue oh. guys? No, that's from Ruby Sapphire, isn't mm. it? The little red mm -hmm. and blue. Plus one, Minun. I don't even yeah. remember their names. Minun, Plusle, yep. Those are those are good Pokemon, but not that's... the Pokemon for Guess That Pokemon this week. Right, yeah. Well, I we am... actually... Ugh. This might be a repeat Pokemon, um, the one I'm thinking of, but is it Lantern? It is not Lantern. Hmm. See, I, I have an idea of what this actually might be, too. Oh, fl oh Flaffy? Mm-hmm. Is that your guess? That's my guess. It is Flaffy. It is Flaffy. Flaffy. Let's get it. I figured Flaffy with two A's and with two, two A's. With two A's, yes, yes. Uh, I had to look up how to spell that because somebody at Local League was asking me what type of cards to invest in uh, for the rotation that is going to happen. I said, well, you know, definitely put your money into electric type. I feel like it's just going to be like water was in this previous format where it's going to start to take over a little bit more again. Um, and I think that getting a play set of Flaffies is not a bad idea. So I had to learn, relearn how to pl spell Flaffy all over <laughs> again. Poka X Word, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day, and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at pokaxword.com and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. What a well, what a what a great hmm. transition into yes. um, our little rotation here. So what March 
2023 has been officially announced as the rotation for when... Well, I don't know if it was rotation, but it was for the new set, though. Oh, yes. The new set, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, the new set release coming out. Mm. Yeah, Japan which... stated that they were going to rotate in January, which is very close to when we would have assumed that we would get rotation. I just, I just don't know, like, why don't we know, right? Like, why mm -hmm. haven't they announced it? Like, they know when it's yeah. going to be, like... Am I the only one who's like, why haven't you just announced it? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I definitely, I, I don't know. I've been anxious to just see when rotation is because obviously like doing shuffle squad things, I, I want to know. Plus we started a bigger, you know, local youth league at our card shop. So now all, I have all the Pokemons and dads asking me, you know, how long is this good for? Um, I don't know. Uh, we, we have a generalized idea, but it could be similar to Japan's, which I'm kind of hoping for if we stay in the same realm. But it could be in March when that new set comes out. And that's generally when they do things like that is, is right around set releases. But. Well, I, f I feel like they kind of have like changed around hmm. our releases and stuff to match Japan. I feel oh, like yeah. that's why we were in that like lost, uh, lost origin set mm -hmm. for longer than... Yeah. We need it to be necessarily because it's we're trying to like line up with Japan, so I feel yeah. like it would only make sense. But hey, I don't I don't work for TPCI. I'm just here on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, so, talking about it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, if if this set comes out in March, or well, I, the set's coming in March. If rotation is also March 31st, mm -hmm. I don't know if I like that because yes, yeah. we have Crown Zenith coming out in January, but mm -hmm. let's be real, Crown Zenith is going to do nothing to really change the format. There's like we thought Pokemon Go was going to do nothing. That's true, true. Too. But I, I we're actually all like this don't... is a garbage set. Yeah. I don't know. Like I, I say Radiant Eternatus is going to be pretty good. I think that that's definitely going to change some things in the format. Plus, there's a lot of unreleased. If you go back and look at the Japanese meta, there's a ton of unreleased cards that we never got that are definitely not Scarlet and Violet cards. So No. That's um, true. I mean, it's like I just do not want to be in this like Silver Tempest format mm -hmm. for any more than like oh, another month or so. Like I feel you. It's just, you know what, like having to deal with the Lugia format – for you know longer than we should be i mean march is just a long time away we literally have the rest of december january february and then literally all of march because it comes out at the very end of march so another four months of this format would not be very fun and i know there's a lot of people that i know personally who have said that they are like taking a break from the game because they don't enjoy the format and from us from a content creator's perspective i have noticed people have not been as interested in silver tempest content than they were lost origin mm -hmm. or pokemon go or Astro Radiance. I find that the November sets usually underperform on YouTube, especially uh -huh. the Fusion Strike. And, you know, if we're stuck with this format until like literally April, it's just like, I don't know, man, this is not going to be a good time. So I'm really hoping that we do get rotation before because I mean, the, the Sword and Shield on format has really overstated its welcome at this point. I'm I am really just totally ready for a new format. I am ready for rotation. I'm ready for a new generation of Pokemon to be upon us because I'm starting to get tired of this format. And mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people that just do not enjoy the format anymore and think that we are, we need some change. And I really hope we don't have to wait until March. Um, and I know I tweeted about that and I like Jake Earhart was saying how it might be a bad thing to have rotation. Cause then we're stuck with cards like capturing aroma, which you know, <laughs> capturing aroma yeah. battle. You hating on the capture ball. aroma. You were saying that, Lindsay, in the stream that one day. You were saying how that might be the, the new am, the new ball card. It might have yeah. to be, right? Like, it might literally have to be. We might not have a choice. Uh, well, we did get some news this yeah. morning, though, that, like transition uh, right there. That, that we don't Next. have to use that as the main ball card, which I've been Next. asking for. This is a Christmas present to me. Uh, I've been asking for this, that they reprint this card uh, to come back into standard format ever since it... it got out of the format because it was such a great card it was what was quick ball before quick ball was out so nest ball has been officially announced as a reprint so everybody that has their full art set of nest balls already now you can use those in standard format which is absolutely insane nest ball one of the greatest ball search cards of all time uh if anybody plays cube or anything like that or glc you mm -hmm. know that you GLC use nest ball uh, Nest Ball is able to search out for no caveat, no no cost, um, a basic Pokemon from your deck. 
So you play four of those, you get your four basic Pokemon, you play four Ultra Ball, you can get your Evolution Pokemon, whatever you want. Now you're all set. So Quick Ball has been axed, Nest Ball, a better card, I think, for you know most of the time, um, is, is coming back. So the only difference is, obviously, we have something like Mew that likes to discard cards to shorten your hand in order to see more cards. That's where something like Nest Ball isn't as good, but I really don't think Mew lost anything, uh, to be honest. But there, there are those other niche situations that you need to discard a card, but Nest Ball's so good. It really is... Uh, as, a great replacement, I think, for a basic Pokemon search. I mean, I remember when I think it I think it was Sun and Moon on mm -hmm. when Sun and Moon on became a thing back in the day. I remember everybody just played, you know, the four Nest Balls. Ultra Ball mm -hmm. also was in that set. Ultra Ball and Nest Ball were both in Sun and Moon base set, which is kind of crazy. We are mm -hmm. it's literally repeating history where we're seeing the, you know, Evolution 2 prizers come back alongside Ultra Ball and Nest Ball mm -hmm. within the same set like it was for Sun and Moon Base. So I thought right. that's really cool how they're kind of doing like a little callback there to like a good era of the Pokemon TCG. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember when everyone played Nest Ball, it was like Nest Ball. They had Apricorn Maker in their decks, too. It's very reminiscent of that. Now, Quick Ball definitely was one of the best cards we've ever had. The discard card effect with Nest Ball or Quick Ball was so good. It was one of the best things about it. Um, but Nest Ball may not be as, I guess, good as Quick Ball in that regards, but Nest Ball is still going to be great to have in the format. I know a lot of people actually were saying to me that they don't know if they're going to like rotation because they're losing Quick Ball and it's going to hurt, you know, Pokemon Search. But mm -hmm. now that we got Nest Ball, y'all can go to sleep safe at night knowing that <laughs> you're still going to have a good basic ball search within the format. Yeah. Uh, so, Lindsay, what's your thoughts on the Nest Ball reprint? I... I'm just glad that I bought my secret Nest Ball for my GLC deck um, <laughs> before this was announced because I think I got it for not very much money at all mm -hmm. and actually was just that. checking TCG player to see if like the stonks for it were showing yet. And as of right now, there was only one Nest Ball on mm -hmm. sale for TCG player and they have it listed for $50. Mm -hmm. That's that was a crazy. huge buyout. Some bio. people bought them out. Oh yeah, huge buyout overnight. Yeah, and I, Alex, by Alex Shemansky. <laughs> I'm just, that's a joke. He uh, he did he did um, post a picture on Twitter with a bunch of the secret yes. rare um, nest ball or the secret mm -hmm. gold nest balls. Um, but I'm just glad that I had gotten one for my GLC deck. Um, I want to have a fully blinged out GLC deck, so. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I did see that, and I thought that was super interesting. I was going to say, that's probably but like I'm, the I'm only glad. time you've you've used Nest Ball, right, Lindsay, is, is through GLC. GLC. Yeah. It's through GLC, right. Yeah. The only time I've really used Nest Ball, what yeah. have, other than the games, of course, yeah. but did not ever play it in Pokemon TCG, was not playing when it was legal back in Sun and Moon. It so. was so good. Yep. If you, you want to go back cool. and play some retro format stuff, that's that's a good card. Um, Very uh, well, Lindsay, and that, I mean, I was going to say you, you probably noticed some other changes to these new Scarlet and Violet cards too, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> and I, I am just hoping that that means that the quality of the cards will also go up because no offense, Pokemon, I am so sick and tired of having terribly miscut cards. I'm sorry. It is what it is, but they did announce that starting with the Scarlet and Violet set is that they will start being silver bordered cards just like the japanese cards love Yay. that they look so much cleaner like so like i love japanese cards because of the silver border i think it's so mm -hmm. fresh looking it just it makes cards look so much better however one of my locals did tweet something and i haven't really been able to sleep since then <laughs> which was i can't wait to have some yellow border some silver borders in my deck that is yeah. the only downside about this. For people like me who really, really can't stand to have mixed arts, especially mm -hmm. like, it's going to be <laughs> tough. That one's going to be really tough for me if I have to have, if I have to have some yellow border cards and some silver border cards, I'm going to want to like rip my deck in half. So <laughs> I think it could help to be honest, because sometimes it's easier to count 
when you see those, you know, color reminders in there too. That's but, true. But plus, you got to think that sometimes people have the full arts um, of some cards, whether they're a playset or not in a deck, and then they have something that is just a regular art. So uh, that visual stimulation of, of having those different style cards is there. It's just not as prevalent because you have this contrast of bright yellow and then silver, which I, I do think silver is optimal. I know I'm going to have a lot of haters on that, but I, I really like the silver borders. Uh, you know, all three of us love the Japanese style of cards now, especially, you know, getting the packs. Um, just having the silver border on a card makes a card look so much better. Um, but I definitely... It does. It does make it look so much better. Yeah. Yeah. The the competitive side of me that thinks, oh, you know, I am going to have yellow borders and silver borders next to each other. Yeah. Um, even if they hollow out the silver borders, whew. um, but I, I think it'll help to count the cards in deck to help prize checking, uh, so on and so forth. So I think that that would be cool. Um, if you did something like that, but, um, yeah. they, they definitely look cool for sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm honestly like, to be honest, I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I don't really care what borders they have. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like losing sleep over it. Um, but I guess it does look nice to kind of have the the Japanese style and, uh, you know, it'll be nice to see. So it's a nice change of pace. Again, the mixed border, definitely people like the OCD and stuff like me included. Mm -hmm. I'll probably be like, I don't like seeing silver, yellow. And it is, it is going to be <laughs> off putting until we actually get to Scarlet and Violet on, which will, you know, most likely be what, 2024's rotation. So, yeah. you know, it is what it is, but it is going to be cool to see it nonetheless. And uh, I'm excited for uh, the Scarlet and Violet set to come out. I guess there's like a little bit of Lynn tea time if you guys want to have like a little minute of like gossiping. Sure, sure. It's not really gossiping, but uh, pro players admitting that they cheated after getting second place at an internationals. Mm. Talk about a big yikes. Yeah. Self snitching. I don't get it. I don't know why you would snitch on yourself, but I guess it's I guess like, like he couldn't sleep yeah. at night. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, I guess he got to live with yourself. To get it off his chest. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It must have been weighing him down. Um, I mean, I get that. Kind of interesting. It is a competitive game at the end of the day. Right. So, yeah. I, and I mean, I know that stress is high a lot of the time, but sometimes people handle that stress differently. And when you want to win and money's involved, sometimes you you do things that are unethical. And and then when you realize that you've done those things, I feel like that that's the point where you're like, OK, you know, what? I did something wrong. I'm going to admit it. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to live with this and it's going to eat me up inside and then, you know, not not be able to play the game the way I want yeah. to, because I'll always be thinking of that. Right. Like the, there's a conscious uh, or a conscience uh, part of that, I think, that comes into play with with a situation like this where, mm -hmm. you know, I think that what was that a, a card was palmed. Yeah, he palmed a card. And then, uh, you know, obviously admitted that 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 was what had happened. And um, I, I think that the biggest part of this controversy is the repercussions uh, that roll downhill to everybody else that played the tournament that played that person uh, and their points and their stipends and so on and so forth that's that's a big mess in the Very background of things so well especially the person he was playing against i don't think it was the toward match it was a match before that i'm pretty sure mm -hmm. you know it, the person he played against in that match where he palmed the card mm -hmm. what's gonna happen with you know his opponent now you know what i mean like right. just it's just a mess you mm -hmm. know like it it is because like imagine imagine like if that was your winning in right like mm -hmm. imagine if you played against him during your winning in and then that yeah. comes out that like that person was cheating like mm -hmm. you can't help but to be like well obviously he, he might have not even cheated that game right but like it can't it, it gets really messy because then it's like well that was literally my winning in like who's mm -hmm. to tell if he did or didn't cheat like right that would that would be that'd be a bummer that'd be a bummer to find out oh, yeah. and um i i feel for anybody who might have been personally affected mm -hmm. you know by this and it's kind of it's kind of tricky but i mean Very i guess tricky. you know at the end of the day good good for him for mm -hmm. doing the right thing afterwards you know despite the fact yeah. um maybe well they did announce on twitter that they were quitting the game after this after the cheating scandal i mean maybe they'll go into uh, a new career of uh you know uh floor magic or something uh, i don't know um if if you're palming a card it, to me i just like 
I don't get it because I don't think that way, right? And I I just like does nobody see that you're you're palming the card and how do you put it back? Because when I know when I play uh, in a competitive arena of any sort. I'm watching the other board state because I have to pay attention. Like if somebody's palming a card, I'm watching them palm the card because I'm watching both of their hands. I'm watching their board. It's just like, nope. it's such a weird situation to be in. I just don't even, I don't even know. Like if you're just, if their opponent's just not paying attention, then they're kind of relying on that. I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's a, a kid's game, right? Like it's, it's a children's game that we, grew up with and we have nostalgia with and uh, we thankfully make money off of and we enjoy sharing with the rest of the world but i just like i'm beside myself to see somebody take that and then they're just like hey i'm gonna cheat it's almost to the same point where like i would never even think of cheating or or sharking somebody uh at like a building battle, right? You'd never want to do that because well, you got like kids that are playing, and and yeah. but these are people all on your same age level. Um, you've probably seen a ton of them playing throughout the years. I think that they were local too, right? Um, so it's just it, it comes to the situation like that where you just have to think of what mindset that that person was in and and how they could do that. But um, yeah, I mean. It... I, I guess good for him once again for admitting that he cheated. Right. Um, it does create a, like a huge mess though. And mm-hmm. I guess if he's quitting the game, then I, I guess it kind of just works out in the end mm-hmm. anyways. Because it is kind of a mess to admit that weeks after, you know, your second place LAIC mm-hmm. run. Like maybe if he did it before, right. um, then maybe it would have been a lot different. But yeah, doing it so long after, it's just. Yeah. Well, I went like, when does the money, when do you mm-hmm. get like the money mm-hmm. for That's true. doing well? You know what I mean? Because right. yeah. like, like Dylan got top 64 at NAIC, but I don't know, he didn't get his money right away. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it takes a bit. So. Yeah, hopefully they they did catch up to it. Did you get your money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that and that's the thing is that all those other people that didn't necessarily get the money or the correct amount of money, uh, based on their placings because of this this cheating. Um, yeah. That that's exactly. that's something you have to take a look at. And I mean, I I do applaud judges and and tournament organizers a lot. Uh, because it is a hard job. I know, I mean, I've done it. I've organized tournaments in real life and online uh, and helped run them. And it is a lot of work and you don't get a lot of pay. Um, I, I just think that there needs to be maybe some more standards and, and other things that people need to look at and and take into account for things like this. Maybe there is a compensation element that needs to come in to judges as well. Maybe uh, it will help them be more on top of things or maybe get... Um, correction to help spot things like that um or maybe it'll help the play style of how pokemon players play so they can obviously see that something like this is being done or or watch the board a little bit closer uh maybe even time extensions uh should come into play uh with something like regional events that way you can maybe slow your brain down and pay attention more so elements of cheating don't come into play i don't know what the answer is but i i just think that something maybe needs to change because we've had an awful lot uh since we've returned to play after oh, covid yeah. Of, yeah. of controversy and cheating and this that and the other thing and i just you know it, it again it is a competitive game but i just feel like it's not the right outlet for for things like this um it isn't. I just hope no. Hope that in the future things change. That's all. I'm just hopeful. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, and you were saying something about like watching like the other person's board. Um, I've had some of my friends from locals tell me that like where people when people do the whole palming situation, like the most common time is when like um and this is just like advice for like new players i guess Mm -hmm. but like it's when when the opponent asks to see your discard pile and like is reaching over to like look at your discard pile i've heard that that is like an opportune time for them to like you know like reach under to like do like a whole little grab thing or like while while your vision is fixed on them (laughs) yeah they're like palming that um small hands like i could never palm a card (laughs) same (laughs) Uh, oh man yeah yeah we can but, um we can move on to the Arlington yeah, yeah. meta prediction. Or do you want to talk about Toronto? Um, well, we can kind of combine oh yeah, Toronto. the two, right? We can uh we can loop them together. 
Yeah, yeah like I think like the MVP of Toronto was definitely like paralysis. And mm-hmm. like to win, I felt like you had to be able to um, not get paralyzed, a bit, uh, like have answers to paralysis. Yep. Oh, yeah. So- yeah, Toronto, Toronto was interesting. So I, I really think that uh, Bradner and Rahul's group, their uh, Espeon, VMAX, Lugia deck was the perfect meta call because Espeon is such a good counter to everything that counters Lugia. It stops Evil Talls, it stops Articuno, it stops Zekrom, it stops a lot of those like really weird things, even like the insta KO. Sableye. Like, Sableye, exactly. It's another big one. Starts like It stops Star Requiem. So I think it was a pretty good meta call for sure. Um, and Toronto was definitely a wild event. I knew obviously Lugia was big. I, of course, went to Toronto and played Lugia V-Star with Mewtwo V-Union. Which is just wild. Woo! Actually, yay! And I'm actually, I'm proud of the deck. I went 5-4. and four. I lost my chance of going 6-3 and three for points because, unfortunately, I bricked twice against Mew in my last round in round 9. Just kind of how it goes sometimes. Uh, but I'm proud of the deck. I didn't get a single tie all day, which is something that, like, looking back, I'm actually really happy that I didn't get a single tie. A lot of people, you know, a lot of the time people miss out on getting day two or doing well because they keep getting ties. And I didn't get a single tie in all nine of my rounds, which I'm pretty proud of. I mean, I am playing a very, like, simple, straightforward deck where you do get to play very fast and you don't really have long turns. But that's just something I look back on. I'm happy I didn't get a tie. But one thing that did happen while I was at Toronto, which was awesome, I got to be on stream for round number three, which was exciting. Um, the first... The first stream they had for Toronto got to be me, so this is kind of cool. Obviously, I got paired against Grant Manley, who was on the Lost Box deck with, of course, a Zekrom. I did not expect that. When I was playing against him, um, honestly, looking back, I definitely could have played better. Um, Looking back, I should have mentioned Manaphy when he uh, did the Greninja turn 2 on my Archeops. I should have definitely prepared for all of that. But I am glad that I got to be on stream, and it was still awesome. But yeah, no, as soon as Grant benched that Zekrom, I'm like, oh, that's checkmate. I have no switch. I have to get the Mewtwo in play. That was my objective the entire both games against Grant. I'm like, I have to get this Mewtwo V Union down before he, you know, sets up really well. Because if I get the Mewtwo in play, I probably just beat Grant there. He has no real way to answer Mewtwo. Mewtwo can't be paralyzed, can't be sableyed. His only way to attack it would be with Kyogre, but as long as I can loop the heal, there's nothing he can do about that. So definitely was a very scary matchup. And Grant played really well. He played so fast and he not even well, not even just playing fast, but he his deck played so fast that I had to basically get the Mewtwo out by like turn three if I even had a chance of winning that game. And unfortunately, I was not able to get the Mewtwo out in time and just kind of de-evolved from there. But it was still awesome to be on stream and uh, getting to play against Grant was awesome, which actually we just picked up Grant too on the Shuffle yeah. Squad, which is yep. pretty cool to see. Congrats to so Grant that's exciting. on uh, joining the Shuffle Squad and, and also congrats to Elena. They both uh, joined us this past week. So shout out to them. Um, snaps, snaps cool. for them. Uh-huh. Uh, I very also cool had a, a great time in Toronto too, uh, playing uh, my my rogue deck that we kind of created mm-hmm. out of a, a whim here. We all had been testing the night before, and nobody really wanted to play the Lugia Mirror. Um, John was on Durant, which actually came in second, or I'm sorry, top four in uh, yeah, top four. Brisbane regionals that same night. And I said, see, I told you it would be a great deck. Uh, John, unfortunately, did not uh, do as well. But I played Blissey Control, uh, which Blissey was talked about as a hard counter to regular control, uh, which we thought that you know people would either be playing Lugia or Control. Uh, getting rid of special energies with Evil Tall. So we added Evil Tall to a Blissey deck, uh, added a couple healing options, and I was doing pretty well for the first part of the regional. You know, I was 5 1 uh, going into round seven and then got paired up to Tord. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we hit Tord and yeah. I'm like, oh, Lugia, easy matchup, right? So, Tord, obviously, one of the best, if not the best player in the entire world. Um, was able to map out exactly what I was doing as I was doing it, but we did have a great match. He he, he thought about what you were going to do before you yes, did. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. So um, right. it was a fun game one. Game two kind of had him uh, on the ropes a little bit, not able to get the Archeops out. Uh, we went all the way to the end of the game, um, and then, you know, time was called. So, you know, one and then 
time. So uh, did take a loss there, which was unfortunate. You know, I thought I, I had a pretty good matchup into the next loss, loss box. Didn't realize they were playing Twin Energy in this loss box deck. Um, so I think that that's definitely a good call going forward too. And a couple of Lost Box variants, um, if you're looking to play for Arlington, is adding Twin Energy in there, uh, or a couple of them. And I have some spicy takes on that on our most recent Patreon article that had come out on Monday um, that I posted for Shuffle Squad as well. But then I played the Xander Control deck for my final round of n round nine, and they played Ice Q. And I just got block mm -hmm. faced to death. I had no answer to block yeah. face with wash energy on, and I just took a hard L. Just you know, draw pass, draw pass, heal, draw pass. Yeah, draw pass, that's a, that's a tough. That's that's a tough way to go. Is yeah, block face. Yeah, I tried Very to get. Tough. They had uh, Pidgeot V in their deck, um, and then I tried to path them so they would deck out and not be able to put Pidgeot back in, but it. Uh, they had too many answers to it, and they were able to loop easier than I was. So uh, it was very unfortunate, but I had a great time playing the deck. Definitely would recommend it. You can check that out on my Twitter, too, uh, for the deck list if you wanted to play it at Locals. And if you like Blissey, it's a great deck. Uh, I threw some mill tanks in there, too. Um, but we definitely saw a lot of cool things there. You know, you were talking about the Espeon. Um, congrats to Piper. Uh, I always enjoy watching Piper play. Um, it kind of beat Alex into sh submission uh, with <laughs> the Mewtwo control. And I love Mewtwo control as well. Um, but, you know, just hanging out at the top tables, just watching this deck just annihilate people was so great. Um, I played Mewtwo control for Maryland as well. Um, I will say that I, I did have the idea for putting uh, Pokemon Center Lady in instead of Cook. Uh, I know that was heavily debated, but I, I feel like Cook is a worse card, especially in a format that now is heavy wheezing. We see yeah. a lot of wheezings come into play. Um, so I think that Statish Conditions with Articuno uh, as well and paralysis yeah. is such, yeah. such a better call. Um, but congrats to Piper on that list too. So definitely a good tournament. I think that, you know, it was definitely expected Lugia would be one of the heavily played decks and it was, and everyone came out with their Lugia counters, very similar to how when Mew was the hot deck and then Salt Lake city happened and it was heavily countered there. Uh, same thing happened. So I'm hoping to see some, um engagement in the actual format maybe some creativity come out in arlington for sure which will make it for a be. weird tournament and i like weird yeah, tournaments i think there'll be i think there'll be cool experimentations yeah. i mean toronto had a lot of experimentations nobody right. expected mewtwo control to win right you know jake gearhart you know with his articuno palkia deck there's exactly. yeah charlie with which the, i love the mm -hmm. other by one, the yeah. way yeah very love cool combo. the articuno palkia yeah very cool combo with the emergency jelly mm -hmm. and even like Rahul and them running the Espeon. Like just nobody would have expected Espeon right. to be good in Lugia. And it's just like I think there's a lot of experimentation. Yeah. You know, obviously a bunch of rogue decks won the other tournaments. Mm -hmm. You know, Flappy Box, yeah. Vigabolt, Palkia, Raikou. Like just it's insane. Mm -hmm. So as much as we want to dog on the format or dog on Lugia, mm -hmm. at the very least we are seeing some pretty creative stuff pop out of the woodwork. Right. So. It is kind of refreshing to see that than just like yeah. your typical Lugia deck winning another big regionals, right. you know. I won't so, like it yeah, too. No, yet. Arling Arlington's gonna be weird. I think yeah. Arlington's gonna be weird. Yeah, and that's I the agree. thing. You got to think that what Orlando is gonna be the same format too. So Orlando it, it is, is gonna be. It, it might be. Well, it might be post rotation. Well, it might, it might, it might be, be post rotation. That would might be, be definitely to cool. Uh, we might yeah. have Crown Zenith though too, right? Right. Well, San Diego uh, is before Orlando, mm, so we'll have to see what happens at San Diego yeah, before Orlando. That's true too, because that's but, the first regional with VGC back. Yep. Um, so that'll be cool. But I mean, I think I'm not gonna leak it because it's right before Arlington. I think uh -huh. we might see some old decks come back out of the woodwork because i think it's it's some time to shine for some older decks that were good before um that weren't necessarily good in the lost origins format so. Ooh, okay pj looking <laughs> cooking in the cooking in the kitchen there yes yeah yeah we're okay, trying a couple okay. things cooking in the kitchen with that pokemon center lady yeah yeah well i don't know i'm not gonna toot its horn because i don't know if it's that good yet but i did see some jolteon um jolteon might be a thing i know i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a thing of should never exist yeah. again. <laughs> you take out some Archaeops, you're all fine. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a weird time. Um, 
for standard in Pokemon, uh, but definitely a good time. I think that it's a great time for people to get into Pokemon for sure. Uh, you get to learn a couple of cards. The mechanics aren't super awful to learn. Um, it's not like everybody's playing control and right. even the control is not like controly. You know what I mean? No. There's not as many missteps I think you can take with a deck like this. I mean, I played during like Pidgeot or Pidgeotto control. Um, and it, obviously there was uh precursor control decks too, but those were like, you're playing nine rounds day one, your brain is spent. Um, and I mean, these, these ones like Mewtwo control Piper's list is pretty straightforward. You know, you get your Mewtwo in play or you put your, uh, mill tank in play and you're rolling, uh, you're good to go. So I, I really think that we'll see some more control for sure in Arlington. Um, and that's, uh, that's where my head's at right now. I really do like control. Sander makes a new control deck every week. Um, so I'm interested to see if we see anything else from Sander. Uh, what do you guys think about Arlington for the the next set of uh, of decks that might, we might see here? I think we're going to see Lugia have switching cards. I think people are going to start putting switching cards. That's just not one bird keeper. I really don't think one bird keeper does yeah, doesn't, much. It's not enough, not enough. So we might see some more um, switching cards for Lugia. I think mm. there's going to be, in general, I think it's going to be a combination of more people are going to be playing the Paralysis because I think people realize mm. how insane Paralysis actually is. Mm -hmm. And then equally as many Paralysis counters, like making sure that yeah. I think like having an answer to Paralysis is mm -hmm. a necessary need at this point, especially after seeing Arlington. Um, so I think I think most yeah. decks will if not should mm -hmm. have a paralysis counter of some sort i feel like that there is a direct paralysis counter trainer card i won't reveal it yet but it's something people might not think of but if you put it in your deck you pretty much auto win any paralysis deck oh you gotta leak that afterwards yes. Yes. I, gotta, I gotta hear on this I gotta hear this. Is it start with a W and rhyme with Osh Energy? It's not Wash Energy, but there is a, <laughs> Wash Energy is a good one. Uh, but but it's so not really a trainer card but though. But it, yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say it is a trainer <laughs> card, um, and I think in combination with a couple other things is is something I'm definitely going to test with the team for sure going into Arlington. The um, spice. And it's, it's very cute. So very spicy. Yeah, I, I think for Arlington, we're probably going to see a lot of Lugia. I think Lugia is still the best deck. Honestly, mm -hmm. I still think that the Espeon build of Lugia is still yeah. the way to go going forward. Espeon is just so good. It counters so mm -hmm. many things. Countering Evil Tall, yeah. countering uh, both Evil Talls, countering Paralysis. Like, checking all those matchups mm -hmm. is just wild. I think the downside yeah. of Espeon is it's easy to counter, of course. Right. If you if your opponent you know can build up a Drapion, they can just go like Gust mm -hmm. Drapion, knock it out. Uh, which we'll talk about Drapion in a minute, actually. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk about Drapion in a sec. Um, and then I think that Path the Peak might see playing Lugia now because Path will shut off Espeon, and then you'll get access to your Evil Tall turn. So yeah. I think Espeon is still the optimal way to go, but we'll have to see on that one um, because I think that Espeon, just being able to check so many different things at once, is just so good, and mm -hmm. I think you have to play the Espeon going forward in yeah. uh, Lugia. It's just my opinion. But I did want to talk about Drapion for a quick sec. So Drapion is so good right now that I think you have to play a Drapion in your deck no matter what going to Arlington, and here's why. Mm -hmm. So obviously Mew is still like top top three best deck in the format. Mew is still a great deck. You yeah. have a Drapion in your deck. Your matchup against Mew is favored a little bit more. You could even play two Drapion in your deck. I've seen people play two, which like at that point, you probably just auto win Mew if you have two Drapions. Mm -hmm. And then the other benefit of Drapion is it's so good against Mewtwo. Mewtwo v Union... Not we just saw Piper win, but there that wasn't the only Mewtwo deck we saw this mm -hmm. uh, past weekend. There was a Mewtwo Gengar deck, right. which did well that Sander played, and then of course Mewtwo is just a really good card, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are going to play with it. And if you have a Drapion on your deck, a lot of the time what you do is you have to you know you bully their Snorlaxes, bully their Mill Tanks, mm -hmm. and then in the background you just power up a Drapion. You force yep. their hammers, you force them to play Crushing Hammer. If you're playing a Lost Zone deck with Mirage Gate. You gotta play a Drapion yeah. because basically you hold the Drapion at the right moment and then you drop the Mirage Gate on them and you build up Drapion and you just blow the Mewtwo up. So I think you have to play Drapion at Arlington. I think no matter what, you have to play Drapion. Mm -hmm. If you don't play Drapion on your deck going into Arlington, you're gonna probably have a hard time against not only Mew, but of course you might struggle mm -hmm. a lot against Mewtwo V Union unless you're playing like Malmar V Max or right. Crobat V Max or just a, another Dark type. But you kind of have to play Drapion mm -hmm. in my opinion. 
going into Arlington. Uh, That's my take on it. Yeah, I, I will side note this too, is that I've seen a lot of Lugia decks now put in the Galarian Moltres uh, to yes, counter like counter things like that. You add an extra hiding dark energy, and then at the end of the game, you come out of nowhere and you just load up that Galarian Moltres and just wipe out a Mewtwo, Mewtwo. or Espeon. Espeon's weak to dark Pokemon? Yep. Yeah. Yes, yep. it is. So... Yeah, I, I think Larry Moltres is due for a comeback in the meta. Oh, yeah. I think that card is a lot of fun to play. Um, and actually, so like I said earlier, I was playing a Lost Zone engine deck. Mm-hmm. It was Lost Box. You had the Raikou, the the Sableye. It had the Snorlax. Right. Like it was a it was kind of based off the Kyogre build. But instead of Kyogre, I did play the Galarian Moltres. Mm-hmm. So Moltres you can play with Clara. So it's like Lost Box with two Claras and the Moltres. Mm-hmm. And Moltres obviously helps you against Mew. Um, and then also, it's basically the replacement for Charizard. It's very right. similar to Charizard, where you whip it out in the later half of the game, and it does a lot of damage. So in that deck, you can use Greninja and Moltres, which is kind of your pseudo-Charizard. Is it as good as Charizard? Eh, debatable. It does require a lot more energy. You do have to have the double energy on top of the energy attachment. But when you have access to Mirage Gate, Training Court, and Clara, it's not that hard to pull it off. And I'm, I just hope that Moltres sees play again. I love that card. It's one of my favorite cards mm-hmm. from the Sword and Shield block. It's so fun to play. And I really hope that it sees a revival in popularity. You know, I've, I've even been wondering if a lot of people are going to be playing Galarian Weezing for Arlington and, and mm-hmm. possibly San Diego. It's like a last, like, hoorah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like it never really got big at any of these in person tournaments while it was really? legal. Yeah. No, it's such a good card though. It is, it's and so it's a dangerous card. Cool. Like it's very dangerous. I, I, and I'm wondering. It makes me wonder, like, why mm-hmm. it hasn't ever done. I don't even know if that many people have played it in yeah. person. It was kind of funny. What uh, Estrada had posted a list from Toronto, right? And then I, I picked up the deck. It's quad wheezing, right? Um, and then I played it at, um, some, some tournament on played at limitless.com. Uh, I came in 10th place right next to Azul, right? And so we, we both bubbled out of cut for top eight. Uh, he picked up the deck the next day and then ran a tournament with it made top four. So, I mean, the deck is good. It just, it does take some matchups. So I'm wondering if we'll see some counters to Galarian Weezing coming out into the, uh, Arlington regional for sure, because I do think exactly what you said, Lindsay, I think that, um, we're going to see some people play it just because at this point now you're just trying to get points in a format and it's not necessarily who has the best deck. It's a great counter for Intellion lists. It's a great counter for Arceus lists. It's a great counter for Lugia lists. It just shuts so <laughs> many things off. Um, it autos Lugia basically. Oh, yeah. You get the Weezing out before the Archeops, and you, you basically just win as long you as you're hitting your energy there. removals. And it plays mm-hmm. the the boost shake, so you don't even have to put a uh, coughing down until you're ready to evolve. You don't it. have to go second. Yep. Mm-hmm. You do not have to go second mm-hmm. anymore, which is the d- most dangerous part. Yep. And like, you know, you can always do, um, you know, if you have uh, a Weezing in the active, and you're like, why well, do you need to get another Pokemon down? Mm-hmm. If you have like that hiding energy, you can just yeah. retreat into a a coughing. You know, if you have an energy, and then just mm-hmm. like ascension exactly it's yeah so no i, I think Insane. we could be good it, it, it's one of those like troll decks mm-hmm. that you have to hit the good yeah. matchups in order for that deck to win like yeah you probably beat meloetta mm-hmm. mew but you lose to double turbo right mew. um you can obviously beat lost box mm-hmm. if they're not drawing well i was playing lost box one of my matches i lost this friday was literally to quad wheezing because i couldn't do anything yeah um and i think that Weezing is definitely a – it's honestly not even a bad deck. It mm-hmm. actually legit could be a, a, a presence going into uh, Arlington. Right. It's just you have to hit the right matchups. And you, mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone is willing to play a deck that is so high roly, but right. we'll have to see, though. We'll have to see. Yeah. I, I do think that it's not bad. I will tell you this. Shout out to Ryan Simmons, who did beat me out of contention for, for Top Cut the other night. Uh, Ryan Simmons, my, my unknown hand brother. <laughs> but we uh, – um, we played a game and he had Snorlax uh, from Lost Origin out, and that that just body wheezing. Um, That's it. Uh, no, the ability shut off by wheezing though. Right, the yeah, ability. Yeah, the ability get shut off? But it just loads up so easily, and it's just knocking out your wheezings time after time. Uh, oh, and the I HP see. is so big too, so uh, they can essentially scoop it up, Mirage Gate back to it if they've you know loaded enough um, yeah. with choruses and whatnot. And it's just that 
really debilitates a, a Weezing deck for sure. So if you're you're looking to beat Weezing, um, make sure you're teching in a couple of Snorlaxes into your deck, maybe some Mirage Gates if you're playing Lost Zone. Snorlax is just a good card, period. So good. I always thought that, that like Lost Box needs to play definitely more mm-hmm. than one Snorlax. Right. It's good against Snorlax is such a good card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. It's good in the mirror. It's very good against Stoutland too. Yep. If you got a choice belt on it, you can one shot the Stoutland yeah. so they can't just roll you and take four prizes. Yeah. Yeah, and it just one shots Luminions and mm-hmm. one shots Crowbats. one shots uh Crobats. Crobats. It's, it, I mean it gets like it two it, shots with cram so too. Good. It one shot. If you get the turn one spit, evolve. yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, and and you know cram like you said with the cram um the spit innocently plus mm-hmm. the Snorlax turns out like you know, good. 280, 290 is a mm-hmm. very good number. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, yeah, Snorlax is OP. I definitely, I'm definitely considering a, a heavy Snorlax build um, going into Arlington with some some cheeky extra cards. Twin energies. Twin energies. Twin energies is, is, is very good. Twin energy is very good. You know, you, you got a Snorlax, you Raihan Twin energy. What do you do? It's uh yep. I think it's it's a good call. Um there's been some ways I'm I'm thinking about uh, I won't leak all the sauce, but uh having Snorlax hit even bigger numbers. Um Ooh. and uh I think they can one shot some V's and V Maxes possibly by doing this. So I I'm definitely testing out a lot of Snorlax, so going into Arlington Snorlax is probably one of my favorites, um, for sure. So we'll see if I play that and uh and test out Mew. Mew is definitely really good, though. Um, Drapion, yes. I feel like there's going to be a lot of dark stuff. Um, so maybe maybe not playing Mew. But if you're a good Mew player... I mean, my first loss in Toronto was to Meloetta Donk turn one uh, for the first two sets of the game. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it just... It feels so good to do that. But I know as a... a previous Mew player you don't do that all the time it's just sometimes you get lucky and I know that that person that beat me didn't make it to you know top 16 um but they were at the top tables for the first half of the day so you definitely get points with Mew for sure um a fusion Mew uh absolutely so I think with all the special energy hate that's in the format right now the DTE Mew the turbo Mew is a terrible call for Arlington absolutely awful call um (laughs) I don't know. I, I, I think that it's not bad because, well, I guess it does have a worse time in a Drapion. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that build of Mew still has so many, like, crazy plays that it can yeah. make, like, Roxanne Path, Marnie Path. I don't know. I still think I both know. Mew I, builds I are very valid. Control. But... Control mm-hmm. is so popular yeah, right now, and Mew is really yeah. bad True. against Control. You sit next to four yeah. or five decks that play four Evil Talls, and, and um, what's the other one? Uh, Flannery's. And you're just yeah, like, I guess, yeah. and crushing hammers now are coming back. So, uh, yeah, and like you have Silene, but mm-hmm. like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Silene's a bad card. Uh, I will say this <laughs> I played locals with quad wheezing yesterday, and mm-hmm. um, I was able to, I played against a Zorark V Star, and I was able to get rid of most of their energies. And to be honest, that they had one energy held in hand for the game. Um, and they, Did you Sydney they, it? no, they shared and scared. I wish I played Sydney in the deck. Um, uh, but if I had done that, they wouldn't have been able to share and scare their Oranguru and, and win the game. Right. So yeah, that was, true. that's definitely tough. But if you're a really good DTE Mew player, uh, and you're not scared of Drake beyond for some unknown reason, then definitely play the deck. But I think that the fusion Mew is just great in a donk potential, uh, that it has. I think that that's the better version of Mew, and that's my personal opinion, but um, especially going you into gotta format like this. You got to have the donk potential, the donk, yeah. The donk. the donk. The donk potential, right, Magnum? Magnum agrees. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so, are you guys... Uh, are you guys play testing for any of the upcoming turn? I know that I'm the only one out of the three that are going to Arlington, but um yeah my next regional is orlando mm -hmm. and so until i kind of know for sure whenever rotation is happening Mm -hmm. i feel like play testing for it is kind of null and void yeah yeah that's facts but i've been i've been doing a lot of competitive play Mm -hmm. on the side behind the scenes i've been spending basically like all of my free time with pokemon Mm -hmm. doing that is trying to get better competitively which is which is a reason why i did kind of stop 
streaming PTCGO for a little bit here because streaming it for fun and then also trying to be competitive when you realistically only have like three hours a night Mm -hmm. to do anything is was not very good for me exactly so So, well it's it's all a balancing Mm -hmm. act everything is pokemon's a balancing act life is a balancing act we're all trying to Mm -hmm. to get there yeah through so um i'm excited for holiday break for sure uh, I don't know if you guys are, but I'm I'm definitely excited. No, I don't got a holiday break. <laughs> well, I'm kind of mad that Christmas and Christmas Eve and all that stuff is on a weekend because right. I don't get days off. Ooh, <laughs> oh, that sucks. So I don't get any days off, which like super sucks. Yeah, yeah, not much you could do. Just play Pokemon. <laughs> it's great talking to you guys, uh, for sure, for this podcast here. Yeah, I think, it was a good episode. I think that we've covered majority of uh, the news right now and the metagame yeah. you guys have anything else that you want to talk about no i think it's a good place to wrap it up here for episode number 19 it's crazy yeah nothing from me yeah nothing from me either i think uh i think we're all good to go here and Perfect. you want to say anything else pj before we sign off for the day yeah make sure you're checking out all the shuffle squad stuff support all of our content creators and all of our pro players you can check this podcast out on any podcast streaming site you can also check it out on the specific youtube channel for the shuffle pod if you search that out on youtube but make sure you're checking out our main youtube channel as well on youtube.com slash the shuffle squad tcg you can check us out over there also check us out on patreon uh, and all other socials and shout out to all of our sponsors i hope to see everybody in arlington when i go there and if not we will catch you next time The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Atlas Collectibles, the best place to buy any trading card game product online. Visit atlastcg.com and at the checkout screen, make sure to use code TSS12 to save an unbeatable 12% off your entire order. Atlas Collectibles will ship your product anywhere in the world, so make sure you're taking advantage of the 12% savings with TSS12. And if Pokemon is not your thing, don't worry. Go to atlastcg.com and see all the other amazing trading card game products they have there to offer. The Shuffle Squad has partnered with PTCGO Store to provide our community with the best access to Pokemon TCG codes. They have codes available 24-7, instant email delivery, and you can save 5% off by using code TSS5. If you're a YouTube member or Patreon supporter, you'll have access to a special code that gets you 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Use code TSS5 today and save 5% on your next order of codes on any codes available at ptcgostore.com. PokeX Word, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon-inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at pokexword.com and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. Check out the Late Night Series Season 6, brought to you by myself, Zach Lesage, and the Shovel Squad. We're going to be running a bunch of sick events for the Pokemon community, and they start on August 30th. So one thing you might be noticing here is that there's an EU time and an NA time. We have one at 12 p.m. Eastern, which works out to about 5 p.m. in London. And then we have one at 7 p.m. Eastern, which should help out a lot of players on the West Coast play in this event. That being said, we still have a lot of cool things going on. Expect similar prizing that we've had for other late night series events. Expect better staffing. Expect expect better tournament experiences. And of course, we do have a stream going up for this season as well, and I will be streaming the event on Twitch. That being said, we have the whole season up on the Play Limitless website. Late Night 51 all the way through 70 runs until we hit the reach, the Invitational on November 5th. So check that out, sign up today, and support Zach Lesage Events and the Shuffle Squad. See you there.